board on our 80,000 uh, uh, Weather King here, 100,000 BTU furnace, and we've got her up and running. But I explained to the customer, I couldn't leave it. Uh, uh, this is not code here. You can't have a flex line ran into the furnace like this. And as you can see, it's basically pinched. But uh, we've got them up and running. Now we're gonna take the time to actually physically uh, rework the gas valve, pull it up to code. And as you can see here too, guys, look at this monkiness on this, uh, on the high voltage here. That, 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 that's not gonna fly either. So I'm gonna uh, rework it as well. All right, guys, just bear with me and we'll get right back to you. All right, guys. All right, guys, I always like using a standoff. Well, that wasn't on there very good, was it? Yeah, that was riding on that, guys. Okay, guys, we're actually going to put our standoff, our pipe wrench here, on the gas valve itself. You want to always do this, guys. It doesn't take that long to get a wrench out and actually put your standoff on there, and that way you don't go tearing up your gas valve and everything. But let's go ahead and get this nipple out. I can't believe how loose this stuff is, guys. I'm taking this stuff out by hand now. All right, guys, we got our little nipple here uh, still attached to the gas valve. We still got our standoff on here, so let's go ahead and uh, pull this bad boy out. I can't believe, like I said, everything on here is like hand tight, man. Tell you what, guys, while we've got the gas out of our way here, it's much simpler. I'm going to go ahead and, as you can see, this thing is filthy, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these burners and clean them as okay, well. Okay, guys, guys, we got our burner assembly out. We simply removed that that plate back there that houses the uh, the rollout switches. Um, it's just four screws in here. You simply remove, take them off your orifices, and we're ready to clean them. All right, guys, let me get this cleaned up, and then we're gonna get back. Okay, to Okay, guys, we got our burner. burner assembly cleaned and looking good. Uh, now we're ready to start gassing. It just made it so easier to do that with the gas off. But um, I've already got my little uh, gas assembly made up here. I'm gonna take this 12 inch nipple here. I'm gonna put a little dope on it. I like to use the Teflon dope. Now I go a little overkill with the dope on here, but I can always clean it up, okay? I used to, <laughs> my buddies used to get on me all the time about that. That's sort of like how I use that nylog, you know? I really put it to it. So let's go ahead and take our drip leg off here. We'll assemble that in a minute. Go ahead and dope up our other side. And you need to make sure that you get the proper, you know, dope for what you're using it for. Like oil furnaces and stuff like that will actually use a different style uh, 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 thread compound. All right, guys, we got our standoff on our gas valve here. Let's take it in through the side. Go ahead and simply thread it in. Using our standoff, we're going to thread it in a little better. You don't need to go ape with this now, but it does need to be in there pretty good. A lot of guys will actually take and do it all in one thing and actually start threading with your uh, with your key or whatever you're fitting, and go ahead and tighten that as they go. Like I said, it's also very essential that you use this standoff, guys, or you're going to be, you know, moving your uh, your gas valve all around. Okay, where you're good and tight in the gas valve itself. Now what I'm going to do is merely put my standoff on this nipple here, the 12-inch nipple, and get our T another couple of revolutions if I can. All right. All right, guys, we're ready to get our drip leg on here, and I've got a, a four inch piece of uh, black iron and a cap. So basically what we're gonna do is dope up our, uh, our nipple here. Like I said, I usually go overkill with the dope, 
but you can always come back in with a uh, paper towel and clean it off and everything. So let's go ahead and merely get it on our cap. And we'll go ahead and dope the other side. Alright guys, let's go ahead and thread it. To our T here, we have our drip level and our cap. Um, this is not necessary whatsoever. I don't know if it actually holds true or not, but I had an old plumber buddy of mine that told me he always takes and puts a little around this little beveled edge here. I don't know the truth behind that, but I trusted the guy, so I'm going to do it anyway, and it's not going to hurt anything. All right, guys, we go ahead and bleed the gas first. You always want to bleed the gas. You don't want to come back because you didn't. Can y'all hear that? Mm, can you smell it? All right, guys, like I said, I put a little bit of dope around that tapered edge. Let's go ahead and tighten it off. Let me get my standoff down here. And we'll go ahead and tighten it. A little bit more, buddy. power is off to the furnace. Um, I ensured that the breaker was off. Whenever you go to messing with electric guys, you need to you put your meter on it. It's better to take the time to test it than to get lit up guys. Especially if you're down like in a cellar or something and you're standing in water and or a wet surface. But uh, that shouldn't matter at all anyway. But uh, just I'm just saying just uh, safety first guys, safety first. All right y'all, let me get this switch apart here. And we'll rework the uh, rework the electric here. Um, basically, I'm going to run this and seal tight, guys. So, I'll get right back to you. Alright, guys. Had to stop by Ferguson Supply over here. Um, had a little accident on that furnace. Um, stuff happens, guys. Um, I busted one of these 250-degree uh, rollout limits, and uh, basically, I had to go get another one. But, uh, you know, guys, you just got to be a little careful when you're doing stuff, but uh, basically, I went to pull, pull the lead off, and it snapped. So, all right, guys, let me get this new limit on, and right, we'll guys, get right we got back to you. got our rollout limit replaced. We've got uh, everything wired back up again. we got our jumpers on. Um, let's go ahead and take this shield. Um, I didn't know if y'all seen that shield when we first put it on or took it off. It had a, like a, a divot in it, okay, uh, a little bend in it, and uh, it needs to set right up against that vestibule. Um, basically, guys, I think at the factory, I come along at a lot of times, I think they're over-tightening them at the factory. So... Let me go ahead and get this back in, and uh, we'll get right back to you guys. All right, we're looking good. We're All looking right, guys, good. we've reworked the gas up to code here. We've got black iron. We've got a 12-inch black iron nipple coming out of our gas valve, exiting our cabinet, where we've tied on with a, uh, a T fitting, a half-inch T fitting, and we've tied our flex line back in, our half-inch flex line. Um, we bled it off before we uh, actually uh, tighten everything up again. All right, guys, we actually reworked our electric. That was hideous. Um, they just had just regular Romex stubbed into it, and that was just a, a nightmare in the making. So what I did was actually reworked it. We've got our seal tight running up here. I actually dealt, drilled a hole through the, uh, through the uh, uh, floor joist here, and we've got our seal tight running all the way up into our cavity up here as well. But uh, all right, guys, let's take a peek. Um, like, I, like I said, we went ahead, while we had everything off, I went ahead and pulled the burners and we cleaned them as well. Um, this little shield here, that was bent as well. Um, I happened to break the, uh, uh, the limit that was coming off, the rollout limit, so I went up and we replaced that, but I bent the shield back to the, as close as I could get it to like factory. But uh, I think that if you don't, uh, if you come on those and you see them bent like that, I think that could actually cause like a nuisance uh, 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 trip on you or something. Um, but uh, that's, that's just what I've been told. But uh, anyway, guys, it looks like we're ready to rock. Let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see what we got, guys. We have inducer motor. Pressure switch is gonna prove. Once the pressure switch proves and it goes through its line of safeties, there's, uh, there's several safeties in here. We've got like the rollout safeties, we've got a safety on the, on the, on the uh, blower itself, and we actually have a uh, high limit safety. So it, it, it proves all that as well first. 
but uh, we should have ignition at any time now. Here we go, we have spark ignition, the gas valve open, and we do have flame. Okay guys, I'm gonna let this thing run for a good 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna do a combustion analysis. Um, the thing is guys, when you're doing your combustion analysis, uh, every manual I have read says that the system needs to be running for a good 10 minutes before you test it. And uh, that actually goes along with the gas valve as well. And any second now, the blower will kick on once the, uh, once the heat exchanger reaches a, 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 an optimal temperature. That way you're not getting a rush of cold air when the blower actually uh, kicks on. But uh, anyway, guys, we actually took the time today to, to clean out the blower assembly here. And here comes the blower, guys. All right, guys, um, I went ahead and I did a combustion check, as you can see with my little cap there. Those are some pretty neat caps, but uh, I figured everybody's seen that, and I didn't want to make the video uh, uh, too, 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 too long for y'all. But uh, all right, guys, I can't thank you enough for watching my videos, y'all. Thank you so much for the kind words, and we'll holler at y'all later. Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye.